translating, reflecting, stretching, and compressing a quadratic. I'm continuing this series on quadratics, and here I just want to be able to highlight these translations, reflections, and then stretching and compressing, and for quadratics. Now, you may recall from elementary school, you know, these particular um, items when it comes to figures. So, for example, you see this triangle, and if you wanted to be able to translate this triangle, so translation just simply means you would take whatever figure you have, or maybe it will be a graph, in our case it would be a quadratic, and then you simply shift it. So you shift it or translate it um, in the x or in the y direction. So if I would take this particular triangle, then I could shift it. I would not change its size in any way. And all I would do is I would just simply shift it to a different position. And that would have been a translation. Now, so let's say if this was the original one that I had right here, then the next one, maybe I'll change the color here. So this one would have been the actual translated one. And now you can translate figures all over the place by just simply either moving to the left or to the right on the x-axis and then up or down on the y-axis. So that's something that you may recall. Now, reflecting is you're going to be reflecting. Now, for reflection, it's always reflecting with respect to what? It's almost like doing kind of mirror images, but you have to do a reflection uh, um, along something. So, for instance, if I wanted to do a reflection, uh, along the x-axis here. So if I wanted to reflect our blue triangle, so in terms of a reflection, okay, so you would have, okay, so notice that here, okay, so this would have been the reflection point of that. Okay, I'm gonna take these points right here and then just reflect them along the x-axis. Now, the second one, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's the other point, and then this point right there. And then this would have been my new reflected triangle that I have. Okay, so that notice that that is now being reflected uh, in the X axis. And you can reflect it in any axis that you like. It doesn't have to be in the X axis. It just means that it's been a, a reflection. Now for us, in terms of quadratic, uh, it will actually mean a reflection in the X, okay? Because for the quadratics, as we have our parabolas, they're going to be reflected. And then I'll talk about that um, shortly as well. Now, in terms of stretching and compressing, so for stretching and compressing, so what we have is you can certainly stretch these figures or you can compress the figures, right? So you can stretch them out um, or you can compress them in. Now, that, so I don't know if we can do that exactly on here, but here's, you know, we could have been stretching these things out kind of along the way, or we can compress them and kind of start squashing them in, right? So we can do that. So this would have been compressing it, and then this would have been stretching it. So that's what would have happened to these triangles. Now, what would have been happening in terms of quadratics? Well, it's the same thing. Now, recall, let me remove the triangles now entirely that quadratics, the formula for quadratics, and I'm going to use the um, vertex kind of formula for quadratics. And I have done a video on that. And if you've maybe forgotten it, because I've already started graphing these things as well, I'll put a link up above as a refresher if you want um, to go over a little bit more on the vertex side. But, okay, so what you have is y is equal to, so it is a, and then you have x, minus h squared plus our k. Now, we know that all of these components are a, so this parameter, this h, and then this k, so they play a role in what happens to our quadratic. Now, if we assume that a is equal to 1, the h and the k are equal to 0, then what you're going to have is, so prepared here, so this, I'm going to bring it back in here, so what you have is you have this parabola. Now, of course, the parabola goes to infinity. It goes all the way up. All right. So this the parabola on its own would have been the case where it's just simply y is equal to x squared, where the a is equal to maybe one. And then your 
um, vertex is equal to one, right? So this is what we would have. Now I'm just kind of sketching this out for us and I wanna be able to show you what happens. Now the translation, so the translating happens with regards to how you're gonna be moving your vertex, right? So if you move your vertex um, around, then that's going to just shift this parabola over. So for instance, if what I did was now my, let's say second example, y is equal to, I'll still keep the a at one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, let's say, you know, let's keep this at two and then let's move it two over here. So what you would have had is now you have shifted your vertex. So now your vertex has been shifted and therefore you have translated your parabola. So now our vertex would have been two, two. So that would have been shifting this parabola over. So if I duplicate this, it would have been shifting this over, let's say two, two kind of something like this. So it translates it. So that HK, of course, you can translate it anywhere you like. So it will depend on where you're gonna put the vertex. You can put it here, you can put it there, you can put it up, okay? You can do whatever you like. So that would have been a translation. Now, in terms of reflecting, the reflecting happens because of the um, actual component of A. So we know that for quadratics, A, if A is greater than zero, then these parabolas are looking up. But if you make A less than zero, so it's negative, then you do a reflection. So basically it starts to reflect back down. So for this, Okay, in particular, let's say if I made it, you know, negative instead of a positive. So I'm gonna um, just show you. So this would have been reflected, okay, and it would have been just shifted downwards like this. Okay, so that's how it would have looked like. And then this one right here, okay, is the positive side. So that would have been a reflection in the x axis, and that is caused by just simply looking at this a. And if a is greater than zero, it looks up. And if A is less than zero, it looks down. That's what you have there. Now, the final thing is in terms of stretching and compressing. So translating is based on the vertex, kind of where you shift this. Reflecting means if A is positive or negative. And then your stretching and compressing will depend on your A. But, okay, your particular A, if you make it greater than one, so if you make this A greater than one, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna be stretching this parabola upwards. And I'm gonna maybe show it on decimals in just a second so that you can see. And then if you're gonna be compressing, then A is basically gonna be between, okay, it's gonna be less than one, let's say greater than, and then zero. So there's kind of different cases for A. Now for the positive case, so when you have A, is greater than one, then you're basically stretching this out. All right, so you're gonna be stretching this parabola. It's gonna get kind of thinner and it's gonna get pulled upwards. So it gets stretched. And then when you have your A, which is gonna be less than one, but still greater than zero. So in this case, you're gonna to start to compress this. So it's going to look kind of, kind of get squashed down and it's gonna open up. That parabola is gonna start pulling up. It's like it's gonna get starting to get compressed in this form. And the same thing happens if A is negative, except of course, okay, it would have been the reverse. So let's take a look. So I'm going to just show you a couple of examples so that you can see um, this thing in action. All right, so here we have decimals and I just want to kind of graph this out. So let's say we have our original x squared. So this is what it was. So now notice, okay, in terms of translating this, you know, I could have just said this, and then I've now translated it. Now we had it at minus two, all right, squared, and then plus two. So notice it translated it over. And you can translate it anywhere you like, okay? So that, you know, so we could have translated it to four. We could have made this even negative. So let's say negative five. So notice that it just translates it, okay? So it just shifts it, right? So those are the translations. The, now let me remove these, okay, whoops. Okay, so let me kind of remove this. I'm gonna take this one out and let's just concentrate on this one. Now, 
with the a, okay, so if a was um, greater than uh, one, so what we've seen is, so let's say if I make it two, okay, so maybe let me keep the original one and then play around. So if this was two, okay, and we made it x squared, so notice it just gets stretched, it just kind of gets pulled up. So it gets kind of compressed in this side, right, but it gets pulled up so it gets stretched out. And then this, you know, as, as if you make it larger and larger, you know, you'll notice that it's going to get fully outstretched, okay? So that's what you see there. Now, in terms of compressing, so like shutting it down this way, you would make it, okay, so in this case, so y is equal to, let's say if we made it 0.5 x squared, okay, so that's the purple that you see there, and that now it starts to get compressed, so it's gonna get opening up this way, and the more that you make it, all right, so the more that it just gets kind of compressed downwards. So that's how these work. Now, if you make them all negative, of course, um, so what you're gonna find is, so here's your reflection, so it reflects back. Now, all the other ones can also reflect back, uh, but they also get stretched and compressed uh, accordingly. Those are terms that you kind of run into, and sometimes you get asked that uh, when you're doing quadratics. So I wanted to go over these translations, kind of reflection, compressing, and stretching, um, and it will depend on you know what terminology the teacher uses, but these ones are kind of common. So that is what I wanted to cover in this um, video, and hopefully we'll see you back uh, for some future videos. All right. Okay. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.